I'm Anil Kumar and in this video, I'll share with you the easiest way of finding domain and range for reciprocal trigonometric functions. So we have taken as an example y equals to 2 secant theta minus pi by 4 minus 1. So we need to determine domain and range of this function. As you know, secant is reciprocal of cosine. So let me write this function as y equals to 2 secant is reciprocal of cosine. So we'll write this as cos of theta minus pi by 4 minus 1. So basically we have a cosine function in the denominator. So for the given function the restrictions will be when the denominator is 0. So let's figure out when will the denominator be 0. So let us say this is the cosine graph. Now, as you know, cosine function is 0 for pi by 2, 3 pi by 2. Here it's like minus pi by 2. Basically, cosine function is 0 for pi by 2 plus n pi. So, zeros for cosine are add pi by 2 plus n pi. Correct? So, you get 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2 and so on, where n belongs to integers. Now what we have here in the denominator is that the cosine function has been translated horizontally pi by 4 units to the right. So basically, since it has been translated pi by 4 units to the right, every point moves by pi by 4 to the right. Do you see that part? So, so the transformed function will be kind of like this. So the zeros will now be at pi by 2 plus pi by 4. Is that okay? Which is, when you do addition of this, 2 plus, so you can write 2 pi plus pi, which is 3 pi by 4, correct? So that is the first zero. The second zero, which was here, will now move to 3 pi by 2 plus pi by 4, right? So which will be... 3 times 4, I mean 2 times 3 is 6. So we get 6 pi plus pi by 4, which is 7 pi by 4. Correct? So what we now notice is that the zeros have moved from initial position of pi by 2 to 3 pi by 4 since we have a horizontal translation here. So we have horizontal translation. of pi by 4 to the right. Correct. So now for cosine of theta minus pi by 4 the zeros will be at 3 pi by 4 plus n pi where n belongs to integers. Do you see that? If n is 1 we will get 4 plus 3 is 7. Do you see? 7 pi by 4. n could be minus 1, minus 2. So that is the general expression. Now with that result, we know secant will be reciprocal of this. So we'll have vertical asymptotes for secant at this point. So those are the restrictions. Therefore, the domain of the function will be that theta belongs to real numbers where theta is not equal to 3 pi by 4 plus n pi where n belongs to set of integers. Do you see that? So that is how you get the domain for reciprocal function. Now let's look into the range of the function, right? So so what is going to be the range? So we know y belongs to a real number, but then what is the condition? Now you can see that for a secant function like now, secant is reciprocal of this. So we have vertical asymptotes right there as, as shown here. So these are the vertical asymptotes for us, correct? Shifted to 3 pi by 4 multiples. But the function as such can be now sketched as this is minus 1. So, so it is going to be kind of like this. Do you see that? So that is the reciprocal or the secant. So this will be kind of like this, right? So this will be kind of like this. 
where for the secant function it is y greater than equal to 1. So initially for the secant function we have a range for secant theta as y greater than equal to 1 or y less than equal to 1. Correct. Now the transformation is that the y values get multiplied by 2 and then take away 1. So if I multiply this by 2 and then take away 1, what do I get? I get y greater than or equal to 2 times 1 is 2 and take away 1 is 1. So that remains same. However, this value which is y less than or equal to minus 1, if I multiply this by 2, it, I get minus 2 and take away minus 1 will give me minus 3. So here y should be less than or equal to minus 3. Do you see that? So that is how we get the range of this function. Correct? So by applying the transformations directly, we get domain and range of the function. I hope you understand and I appreciate it. Thank you.